Hello, hello, welcome back to the big board. All right, all right, let's do this. So, one of the cool things about wargaming is that you can surprise yourself and learn something that's a little more complicated, or you can disappoint yourself and not be able to learn something that's a little more complicated. <clears throat> and here we're looking at a GN Strike for Victory Games. It's a Mark Herman title, and it, it has a reputation for being very intimidating and difficult. And of course, I know there are many, many smart people out there who will go, well, Kevin, that's not true. It's just easy and you're just not that smart. And that's awesome. Good for you. You grokked it and you got it. Now, for me, I think 80% of the battle here was letting, accepting to myself that I could actually work it out and take the time and see how things unfold, right? So it doesn't matter what term we're at and all the rest of it. All I wanted to do was share with you a uh, ASM on ASM or two, two subgroups fighting each other and hopefully I can articulate what the rules say and then how I've applied them in this particular circumstance so that we can get a feel for the game and the combat and we can see that it's probably not that hard, right? Um, so the first thing I, I had been doing was I found this little summary uh, of abbreviated segments of play and what I started doing was adding some notes for each individual segment and just briefly allowing me to look at one page and go, okay, you know, in the first initiative segment, so that's the initiative player, of the first action phase, they're gonna to get to uh, you know, conduct air missions. And I put things in the order that I assumed that I might play them. The order is not, struct is not strict. Uh, I would perhaps, first thing I would do is look at offensive missions for aircraft that were in offensive mode. Then I would look at naval movement and ground movement. Then I would de declare combat. And that would allow a reaction uh, uh, phase as well, I believe. And then there's a reaction segment where any air units that are, are set in offensive mode can conduct strikes, and then naval units can move, and there's ground units in reserve can move into combat hex and all that sort of fun stuff. And while that's all going on, the initiative player could conduct uh, interceptions. So anyway, yes, I kind of broke that down into the, the key segments and outlined things that try and help me keep things straight. And I obviously still check back in the rule book. But <clears throat> what we've got going on here, so let's move the camera, we'll come back to this in a second, almost because that's kind of the results. So let's see if we can zoom in here a little bit and get the shadows out of the way so that you've got a nice view. All right. So this hex here, these US naval units, uh, I can't see them because of my finger, SSNs, right? They were back here and they moved in their uh, reaction move phase. They moved to here. And at that point, the uh, this detected submarine decided that it wanted to try and detect these guys. Let's go to this hex. And they were successful. And they then, because we had a one move, one naval movement left in our action stage, which was just blind luck, uh, not planning on my part, and an interesting tactical note to make, right? If you can, once you start getting into this sort of more uh, uh, close arrangement uh, between the opposing forces, you probably want to keep one or more naval moves in your back pocket so that you can conduct interceptions like this for, for crazy kamikaze attacks like the, the, the US is doing. So these guys have decided they're going to intercept this, this force. And I, you know, in actual fact, these units go here, right? So they conducted the interception and then we, we conducted the attack. And the attack is quite simple. Uh, both, both sides are detected, so both sides, are, it's going to be a simul simultaneous resolution. And we're going to use this number here, 6, which is the combat value of the, uh, the anti-sub value of the unit. Make sure that's correct. Yes, that's for sub-warfare. And the US have 8. 
Uh, so you can see there's a fair difference there. <coughs> so we both roll d10. And if I roll under this number, I then put a little marker on the track and be denoting the difference between this number and the number I rolled. So if I roll the 4, I put it on the 2 box. And here, if I roll the 4, I put it on the 4 box, right? Because that's the, the difference. And then each side takes their uh, ECM, basically defensive measures, electronic countermeasures, and all that sort of fun stuff. So it's just a, a, a way of uh, representing defensive capability. And you can see the US has very strong 8. And uh, then you take the difference of that and put that. Uh, what, what you do then is then you reduce the hits down the track by the, del the delta of your die roll against this number. So these guys roll the six, uh, uh, seven, sorry, a six, a six to hit. Was it a six? No, they missed completely the first time. These guys rolled and got two hits, but then these dudes rolled well, they got a two, and that reduced the number of hits down basically to one, right? And I'll show you this in a second on the, on the track. So then what happened, so these guys are both in this hex now, so they both had a little bit of combat. These dudes took one, ended up taking one hit, which is gonna reduce all these uh, factors, except for the movement factor, by one. So, now, uh, that was an interception, so the, the US, now that they understand just how freaking awesome they are, have said, fine, since you attacked us, and we are now officially at war, this is how I, Trying to get the game moving along here so we can get into the war phase, right? Uh, let's let's get after it, right? So they said, so let's move into that hex and let's uh, let's attack that uh, little Russian sub there. So uh, the first sub rolled uh, a a one hit, and the next American sub rolled uh, three less on the die roll, so they got a uh, a two hit result, and then the, oh, now I have to remember here. Doggone it. Now the, uh, the, which one is this? Yes. This is the saves for the Russians because it's red. So it's going to, it's going to negate a, one of these hits, right? And I'm assuming you don't make these cumulative because, you know, and I think it'll work out the same if you did anyway. Uh, it, it really seems to talk about one-on-one -on -one combats, and so here I am now thinking maybe I don't know the rule that well. But let's say for the for argument's sake that rather than combining all the hits that we would resolve each one of these discreetly, I did in fact roll twice for saves uh, because there were two two attacks coming at the Soviet uh, sub. So basically, that's going to negate. Uh, well, will that negate? I don't think it will because you it is equal is there and it doesn't go negative so I'm going to guess that this one hit save will push this down one like so and then the uh, oh I know what it was I know exactly what it was ignore the last 40 seconds maybe I'll try and uh, I'll edit that out for you okay here's what happened this is the Soviet role for the hits they got one hit this is the, uh, the hits for the Americans, and this is the save roll by the Americans, and the, the Soviet unit did not save. That's what the, the, the markers are. Uh, and you don't get any markers really for this, so it's a little tricky. There's supposed to be some track thing, uh, counter, I can't seem to find it. Uh, so you're supposed to move it up and down. But obviously, to try and visually represent it, I thought this might be easier, but it appears that it's not. So, here we go. Uh, the Soviets in inflicted a hit. It, this drops down to one, because that's as far as it can go, I believe. And uh, it's because the U.S. had three saves. So, that kind of makes the U.S. one of the, one of the subs will get one hit. And we're going to put three hits on the Soviet unit, which is... With or which already has one hit on it. There's its uh, whoops. Where's the camera? There's its uh, four rating on the bottom right hand side, and it already has a one, a one there. So that that guy's sunk in the Black Sea. That's pretty awesome. And one of our sexy U.S. subs takes a one hit. 
and that took 10 minutes to explain. It took a little bit longer than I thought. I will try and edit out that stuff in the middle uh, that where I got a little confused here. But basically, that's it. And it's pretty straightforward if you follow the rules and do it right. Uh, so there you have it. I thought I'd share that with you as a victorious moment for myself, overcoming the fear and trepidation of yet another Mark Herman rulebook and uh, embracing the suck and getting after it. All right, you guys, take care.